Okay, before I start today's Retro Bat and Sam Coupe setup, if you like what you see today, hit notification, subscribe, and like so you don't miss upcoming retro emulation content here on my channel, just Jamie. That means you'll get notified every time I release a new setup guide, and it really helps out my channel too. So we're looking at Sam Coupe today. Before we get into that, just make sure you've updated RetroBat to the latest stable, which was released around 24 hours ago. We're currently on stable version 6.3.0. You can check that out in my playlist. I've done an update guide on that as well as a full setup guide for beginners. So Sam Coupe, some of you might not have heard of this computer from 1989 to 1992. It kind of caught on to the microcomputing era a little bit too late and in some sense it was a failure. Uh, so game-wise, kind of mixed between Commodore, Amiga and ZX Spectrum, I'm going to be setting this up today and show you some homebrew modern recent games. So what we're going to do first is take a look at file extensions. So all of my games I've got here in .dsk, those are disk images. File extensions also accepted are .mgt, .sbt and also .sad. So what we're going to do first of all is just copy those games into the Retrobat ROM directory. So inside ROMs and we're going to just scroll down until we find Sam Coupe. Here is Sam Coupe and I'm just going to paste those games inside. Now, quite a simple setup really, but I'm going to show you a little trick around getting your buttons to work, your controllers to work. So, we're going to open up Retrobat. Okay, so if you've done this correctly, you should see Sam Coupe. If we go inside of that folder, I've got my three games in here. Now, first of all, what we're going to do is just open a game and we're going to need to install an emulator for this. So we're going to download and install Sim Coupe. So just press yes on this. And here we go. So my game is open straight away. So I've just pressed my F8 button and that's opened up Sim Coupe emulator and from here we can mess around with controller settings, that type of thing. So to do this what we're going to do is just go over to tools and if we then go to options, from here just go over to the joystick tab and under device make sure your controller is connected. As we can see I've got an Xbox controller. Under controls, joystick 2 tends to work fine with me but... Some games are going to work with Joystick 2, Joystick 1, and even Kempston. So just be aware of that. Now, once you've configured this to your correct controller that you're using, you might find that the start button isn't working. So what we need to do is actually map this out inside a Retrobat. So if I just leave this to Joystick 2 for now and go to OK, I'm then going to File and Exit. So we're back into Retrobat and what we're going to do, go down to Advanced System Options, Edit Pad to Key Profile. Now what I'm going to do just here is just go to Start and I find that the space bar on the keyboard acts as the Start button, the Start Games, that type of thing. So I'm literally going to press my A button on the space bar just here and we can do this for whatever keys we want. So let's just say for example a Sam Coupe game is predominantly controlled by keyboards. Then, for example, if I go to D-pad up and press A on my controller, I can look for the correct key which responds to the game, say up for example, and all I need to do is just map it. And should you need it, we can also emulate mouse cursor here as well. So what I'm going to do is just leave this to know for now and just make sure you save. So if I go back into one of my games, let's go for Exodus again. And now by pressing my start button, I can actually go inside the game. But the issue I'm having this time is my duck, whatever it is I'm controlling, isn't moving around. So what I'm going to need to do is just go back up to Tools, Options, Joystick. And like I say, some games are a little bit funny, a bit like Commodore 64 games, I suppose. Some games are going to be controlled by just Joystick 1 or Joystick 2 or a combination of both. So in this case... Joystick 2 opens up the game, but Joystick 1 is actually going to control the game itself. If I go back to OK. So 
So obviously since we're in the emulator, we can actually turn this into a full screen again. So just go to view and full screen. And we got different options here with video. So I can go to TV visible and full screen. I just quit out the game for now then. So file and exit. And we've also got Rick Dangerous here. So Rick Dangerous is obviously a very popular game from the C64 itself, the Amiga, and pretty much everything back in those days. We of course got Homebrew Port of this for the Sam Coupe. Okay, so we can actually exit the games with the controller itself. If we just go down to view pad to keyboard information, I got the hotkeys just here. So it's telling us that we can press Alt in F4 on the keyboard. We can actually map this to control. So Alt in F4, if we come out and advanced system options, edit pad to key profile. And what I can do from here is just select a couple of buttons that I'm not using. And it's going to be the ALT button as it just said. So we'll put that one for left shoulder. And for right shoulder we'll use F4 button. So just remember when you're doing this go down to save. So if I then open up another game. So let's go for Dave Invaders. So I'm on my game and just by pressing the left and right shoulder buttons. That's exited the game. Okay, so Dave Invaders isn't compatible with a controller, so for this game, we're going to need to map out the M key, the N key, and the spacebar, which is the game's keys. So if I hold down the A button on this game, from here, I'm going to go down to Create Pad to Key Profile, and then I can map these out. So like I say, this game responds to the letter N, which is going to be the left. So all I need to do from here is go to N, and then for right, I'm going to select M and for the jump button I'm going to use my A button and like I say this one is actually a space bar. So if I come out of here and of course just save changes if you're doing this. And of course, I've just exited that game by pressing my left and my right shoulder buttons, which we mapped out through the key to pad. And that's it for today's Retrobat and San Kube setup guide. So it's recommended really that if you really want to play games on this system, I would press your A button down, say you're using the Xbox controller, to configure each game. So anyways, if you liked today's video, hit notification, subscribe and like so you don't miss upcoming retro emulation content. Also join me on social media. I'm on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter and TikTok. But until next time, stay retro.